All right, guys, to get to the point so we don't have a long, long video here, um, I came up here and looked around uh, Stately Mouse Manor. It is time to start putting stuff up and get reorganized and get rid of some stuff. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I was looking around, and for the month of April 2015, uh, I was really surprised with what I accumulated, considering that I probably spent $10 and everything else was in trade uh, for the whole month. And I really was not setting out to look for comics, right? Uh, so... As I'm sitting here with a table full of stuff here, we'll back up, and I'm not going to go through all of these because there's tons of videos on it, but going all the way back to free comic book day uh, that hit uh, back in May, the first week of May and stuff, you know, I got my free comics and uh, everything like that. Uh, finally got an Attack on Titan so I can check it out, and uh, you know, just the regular stuff, you yeah. know. Got a pretty good stack here. Uh, free comic book day was interesting because at the comic book shop that they were having free comic book day, they had a really good turnout. It was in Princeton. It's called Crit Hit Comics now, and they just uh, it's a it's a you know a wife and husband and I think they have a silent partner. Uh, they bought up the shop and the people that were in the shop before that, the place was so rude and so they just kind of, a bunch of people were sitting around constantly playing on their computer and stuff like that, that last year's free comic book day had 15 people show up the whole day. So when I went in there, it was all these new people and kids and stuff like that, hey, everything sat around in a U-shaped table, ended up seeing ECW fan, movie John 75, a guy named Eddie, uh, they all have or have had a YouTube channel, so it was kind of cool to see them. But all the new people that were coming there that weren't really into comics and stuff, they were, uh, you know, checking it out for their kids, free comic books, fans of the movies, stuff like that. Um, it was really easy to get stuff because they were just kind of all kind of standing around not sure what to do. So it wasn't like I was being rude. I was just doing the free comic book day routine where you get your one book and go away. And that's why it was so easy to get stuff. And uh, a few other things. They had some sales going on. on, crate, on uh, they had a table full of uh, graphic novels and whatnot. So I ended up getting uh, a DC graphic novel from the 80s, uh, the Medusa Chain. I got this for a dollar. Um, and what was so funny is that right in front of me, they were sitting there going, look, somebody actually bought that. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, the DC graphic novels from the 80s are actually kind of hard to find uh, in good shape and stuff, even if they may, may or may not be worth any money. So, But this is the Medusa Chain by Ernie Colon. I've just seen it in advertisements, never read it. So I wanted to check it out. Another thing they got that they had... They had a ton, a ton. If you are a Whovian, you'll know what I mean, okay? They had a ton of these reprints, uh, graphic, you know, trades here, soft cover trades of reprints of uh, short stories that came over from England and stuff, okay? And they were all of Doctor Who. Now, I picked this one up. This is my least favorite Doctor, but it has John Ridgway, Grant Morrison, and Jamie Delano uh, doing, these are uh, comics from the 80s of the, uh, which one is this, fourth, fifth? Sixth Doctor, um, you know, Colin Baker and stuff, poor guy, you know, got a raw deal and stuff, but these these stories in here are amazing. Uh, Grant Morrison is really knocking it out, you know, he's some young Grant Morrison in here, just really knocking it out of the park and stuff. So that was cool, but they also had those of, uh, let's see, he was the fifth, see, he was the sixth, seventh, they had a ton of the eighth Doctor, um, which I really almost thought about getting those because... You know, he had the Fox movie back in the 90s. He, uh, you know, that was his only thing. But he did a lot of uh, radio plays uh, of Doctor Who. So I was really, really thinking hard about getting some of his adventures in trade. Uh, and actually, the advertisement back here has a whole, you know, well, there's a whole series of these. Really nice stuff. Five bucks. Could not believe it. I mean, it's, it's beat up and stuff, but I have no idea where they got them. So I was happy to get that. Oh, uh, what else did I get? And just throw this out there. Yes, I got a modern comic. Yes, I tried to get this. Yes, this is not reader friendly unless you've been following the Marvel books and Uncanny Avengers and New Avengers or whatever and stuff. But in the back of it, it does say the Marvel Universe from 1961 to 2015. This is the end. So I figure for my personal collection, apparently this will be the last issue of the traditional uh, Marvel Universe, Secret Wars number one, and it read like Crisis. I don't care what anybody says, you know, Crisis on the Infinite Earth from the 80s. Um, and then I, I compiled um, a, a long box of about 200 books. Yes, it was some Conan and it was some Red Sonya, but it was also my Doubles of Daredevil, 
my doubles of Fantastic Four and some uh, New 52 stuff that I could not give away. Uh, I've had all that stuff on eBay or tried to sell it, so I just took it out and for that whole month I traded it. And I think the rest of this was in trade, okay? There might be a stack here I bought for a few bucks and stuff, right? So the first thing that I did, where did I get these? There's a place in Tazewell, Virginia. It's a pawn shop, but he sells comics. He pulled out a few Spider-Man. Uh, I had some amazing Spider-Man in there, you know, probably like you know, about five issues, and we went book for book. And he actually gave me these. And they have a musty smell to them, but I put them in a bag with a dryer sheet, and they smell much better here, man. But anyway, here is Defenders number 14. Really happy to see that. Fantastic Gil Kane cover. That is the uh, Hulk fighting, uh, looks like it's the Defenders fighting the Brotherhood of Evil, which is just fantastic. Uh, well, Alpha and the Ultimate with, uh, you know, Magneto. Uh, this was really good, 1974. Got uh, issue 23. Love that. Um, I love this cover because I love Airwalker. I uh, read Airwalker when I was a kid when he popped up in um, Fantastic Four. I actually had a Marvel Treasury size edition Fantastic Four book that reprinted, uh, I think it was like 121 to 124, the Fantastic Four or something like that. And it was Airwalker popped up. So here this is from 1980, uh, number 305, Thor versus Airwalker. Really glad to see that. Uh, and, you know, I grab these when I can. This is the original official handbook of the Marvel Universe before they came out the deluxe edition. I always grab those to try to get them. Uh, of course, it has a wraparound cover. All right. And, you know, this is, of course, you know, characters D through G. Okay. I uh, completed my Secret Wars 2. I think this may be a double, but I don't care. It is a beautiful copy. Um, just still glossy Secret Wars 2. This is probably from 1985. New Mutants number 36. And of course, you know, New Mutants have gotten hot. Uh, this may be a double, but it's okay. I need uh, the Jeff Johns pre-52 Green Lantern series that he started. What I'm, try I'm trying to collect all of them, and I need a few in the teens, and I need one in the 20s, and I'll have them all. But I grabbed this, 27. I do think this is a key issue. I think this is the first appearance or death of somebody. I uh, found this, an 80-page giant Superman annual. Uh, number 8 from 1963-1964, but let's not get too excited because the uh, back cover is missing, but that's okay, it's okay. You got me a Omega number 1, Omega the Unknown, Steve Gerber, classic, a little bit of a hard read, was the first time. And then he threw this in just for the hell of it, uh, this is volume 5 of uh, Fables and the Trade Paperbacks, uh, The Mean Seasons. And I had a, I, I followed Fables when it first came out up to about issue 41 or 42. And when they revealed who the adversary was, who the main antagonist was that was taking over all the fairy lands and everybody took refuge in the real world. Uh, when they said who he was, I was just, I went ballistic and just got rid of him. I was like, that sucks. And I still stand by that. I know they had, it was supposed to be Peter Pan, <clears throat> but uh, they found out that he was not in public domain, uh, so they couldn't use him anymore. So Bill Willingham was forced to use somebody else, and I was not on top of that. Uh, where am I here? Okay, here's some other things that I traded that stack for. Uh, some of this stuff is from a flea market, uh, maybe some yard sales, uh, maybe a bookstore. Like I said, you know, I was just all over the place in the month, man. But I got issue uh, 312 of The Incredible Hulk. Again, a Secret Wars 2. I'm going to get all of those. Uh, and this is a fantastic Mike McNola cover. I mean, this is one of those covers that I remember from, you know, when I was, when I was a kid with The Hulk. Uh, between the advertisements in the back of some of the books um, for The Secret Wars 2 crossovers to just being Mike McNola just stuck out. And I know the style's real different here. So... All right, got some uh, new mutants. Like I said, I you know traded a bunch of these. Uh, I got this because it's an Inferno issue. I think I need one more Inferno issue. I have. I think I'll have all the main books, the title, the crossover there from the '90s with the Goblin Queen and the demons and everything coming to life in the city. That was an inanimate, inanimate object. Seventy-two. I uh, got number 75. I love this issue when it came out. I bought it off the stands because John Byrne came in and did the art and stuff. It's when he was coming back to Marvel from uh, DC there uh, after doing Superman. Salvation Run number 7. Uh, turns out I need number 5. Okay, this is a 7 issue run. I wanted to check it out. Everybody said it was a very cool miniseries from like 2008. Uh, apparently, from what I get, uh, everybody had enough and they grabbed 
every villain. All the heroes grabbed all the villains, and they uh, they stuck every villain on their own planet. So this is like the Joker army versus the Lex Luthor army or something of super villains. But this is number seven of seven. I still need number five. They had it. I thought I had it. Rising Stars number one, volume two. I'm slowly getting a collection of these up. I want to end up reading it. Cracks me up because I remember Wizard having an article and some when this was coming out in 1999. I think that's when it was. J. Michael Straczynski was writing it. They were predicting that this was going to be the book that topped Watchmen. Okay, Telos. I'm about, I just about have all of these. Uh, I think there's only like maybe nine of these or something. I can't remember. But this was Mike Waringo's and Tony DeZango. Who wrote this? Uh, Todd Ma oh, Todd DeZango and Mike Waringo. Um, this was a series they did for Image. And, uh, you know, it's just a real fun fantasy type thing. Uh, I'm really into Ringo. Uh, rest in peace, Ringo. So, I'm getting all those and then I'll read them. So, here's number six. Telos. Number five. Look at that. Good stuff. This nice little fantasy story. Number four, and I think this is a Jay Lee uh, cover. Which was very cool. Fantastic. Uh, and then this is a hardback or a softback with the first three issues. I got that. Like I said, I got all this in trade, which was very fun. What do I have this? Oh, I was reading the Elementals, man, and I made it. I got the stack mixed up here. Yeah, I was. I've been reading some element, Elementals finally. So. Those are not new. I wondered the stack was so big. Um. Right off the bat, uh, this, I went to the, another bookstore, uh, traded in some hardback books. The library over here had a sale on books where you grabbed what you wanted, made a box, whatever, and you would donate money. So I gave $2, got a big box, of, got some DVDs, got the, all these VHS tapes. So I'll do another video with all this stuff. And then I took the hardback books to a bookstore, got $25 in store credit, and uh, bought a few other things, but I got some more spirit magazines from... Uh, Kitchen. This is when they went to Kitchen Sink Press. Uh, so these are reprints of uh, the one, uh, Will Eisner's uh, Spirit. Great stuff. Uh, then I got these at trade at the Hillsville Flea Market uh, Memorial Day. Uh, the, first it was half off, and then when I traded the books that were left over from the month of those 200 books, I just gave him everything, and he let me go through and. This is actually probably like $125 worth of stuff for his prices, you know. Uh, anyway, I got the, this is like brand new. This is a DC Blue Ribbon Digest. Uh, all these stories are about Kryptonite and Superman. Uh, Secret Origins of the Legion of Superheroes. I definitely grabbed that. You know, and some supervillains too. Fantastic. Famous first editions, though. These are great. These came out in the 70s. I think they started around 74, and I think they made a few of them. But uh, this is the, the famous first editions are famous because um, they reprint, you know, like Batman number one. But they don't just print reprint the stories. They give you the cardstock. They give you a little bit of uh, behind-the-scenes information. And they print everything that was in that comic. So this is a giant size reprint of Batman number one, advertisements and everything. We even get our pinup. And this thing is in phenomenal shape considering that it's, you know, black cover and it's over 40, it's like 41 years old, I think. I think this is a reprint from 1975, excuse me. Also had this uh, Wiz Comics. Uh, big shout out to Great Legend. Famous first editions, Wiz Comics. This thing is phenomenal shape. Look at this. Look at this. Cannot believe it. Yes. Uh, and then the guy had some uh, treasury, other treasury editions, and it kills me because he had the Tarzan one. And by the time I went and got my box out of my van, walked halfway across town, and walked in there, it was gone. Somebody freaking bought the thing for like 15 or 20 bucks. I could have gotten a trade, but I got this, uh, another Shazam or DC Treasury Edition, so that's good. All right, uh, and here's some more of the bookstore stuff. Yeah, the bookstore stuff um, that I showed a minute ago. Anyway, I got a trade of uh, Lucifer. This is volume two. 
So I'm going to imagine that's 7 through 12 of the series. Uh, it's not important right now, but I stayed away from this series because I am kind of funny about buying books where, you know, the protagonist is Satan. I mean, you know, it is Vertigo. And then they had all of these laying around there, and like I said, I had store credit left over, so I went for it. And I think they were also having a half-off sale when I was there. I was looking up. And these were all $3 a piece, so I got them all for uh, somewhere $1.25 and $1.50. So these, these, these range from $1.25 to $3, but she was having a half off sale that day. So I ended up getting some Suicide Squad, and it's amazing because it picks up. Back in the day, I lasted about 15 issues in the Suicide Squad. I still have some of those issues. I gave them a bunch away in trade a few years ago. And uh, this picks up right where I quit when it was on the stands. I cannot stand Luke McDonald's art. I couldn't do it. Okay, Here's number 16. All right, I got two copies of number 21. One's in better shape than the other. Uh, number 27. Okay. Uh, number 31. Okay, 32. Uh, 35. Uh, 36, a little Dr. Light going on there. Phoenix Gambit 41. I was always curious about this, but I never really wanted to track it down and see what it was about. I remember the advertisements for it. Okay, number 43. Continue the Phoenix Gambit. Two issues of those. Uh, 44. Nice, nice Captain Boomerang. <laughs> this series actually made me a fan of Captain Boomerang. So, number 45. Deadshot, Bronze Tiger, I mean, just Katana, Katana coming in there, 56. I always had a soft spot for Katana, so it's kind of cool to see her uh, going to be in the Suicide Squad movie. 57, getting close to the end. Love this. War of the Gods crossover, but it's got Black Adam in it. I am there, okay? So number 58. And they brought in the Adam with issue 62. I don't think they lasted much longer than that. Okay, here's a few fill-in issues that I needed. Uh, really glad to, glad to give these. I actually like the Legion of Superheroes book that came out starting around, I think, 89, where it was five years later, and the Dominators, these, this alien race had, you know, there was a big world war, and the first 12 issues is sort of like uh, the Legion get to, getting back together. Uh, they're grown up. Uh, nobody uses their superhero names. The Dominators completely decimated the United Planets and all this stuff. And Anyway, so I needed number two, so now I have number two. Keith Giffen art. Uh, this is a mini series from the 80s, around 85, I think. 85, and I had one, two, and four forever that I bought off the stands. And then this is number three that I needed. But what's great about these is that Frank Miller did the covers for each one. So that is a Frank Miller cover. Insides, Frank Miller has nothing else to do with it. But this is basically Superman. Kind of the secret years is where he transitioned from Superboy to Superman, so this is kind of like the college years. Uh, involved the Bermuda Triangle and some other stuff, you know. So, but the covers to me were the best things about it. Found this, got tickled to death. A prelude to the Blackest Night. I thought I had everything Blackest Night, but this was the uh, seven out of a seven issue miniseries by Scott Collins. He wrote and drew it. Uh, it leads straight into the Blackest Night where Solomon Grundy gets a black ring. Uh, actually, it goes into Superman. Batman, a series that was out then that has Solomon Grundy, uh, Bizarro, and Man Bat. So it's all ties together. Got issue 75 of the Superman Batman. I'm just going to go for all these. I think I had like the first 30 some issues and number 50. I got so many odds and ends. I think it's doable just to go ahead and get this. This is the pre 52 Superman Batman. Or as I like to call it, World's Finest. But then I was really happy to get this. I looked for this for years. People overprice this when they have it. This is Legend of the DC Universe, uh, number one. This is where they have uh, a different uh, team that will come on, writing artists and stuff on each issue, and they kind of write different stories. But number one, this is a missing chapter of Crisis on Infinite Earth. I think it fits in between four and five, and it's by Marv Wolfman. So it is canon, and it can fit right in there, and it's awesome. They go to, I think, what it's called Earth D, where they're basically... Uh, I don't know if they're white people or not, but they're definitely, you know, the minority or something like that. But all the heroes are Latino, African American, uh, and Native American, or whatever. You know, a very diverse uh, world. I uh, got this. Uh, there's an era of Legion that I love, and it's like the Keith Giffen, Paul Levitt's year, you know, years. But I think it's like issue maybe 
290 to about 310. I just love that era of the Legion of Superheroes. And this is also the first appearance of Amethyst. You know, so there you go. Um, finishing up my Walt Simpson Orion number 19. This is a hard issue to get because it's the Joker. They had some kind of last laugh Joker thing going on back then. And it has a Tales of the New Gods by Eddie Campbell. So, you know. Deep Six with uh, the Joker Fish. Cracks me up. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. TV will heart. Marshall Rogers. And then, like, the Exiles, I've been really getting into them. I need the first six issues except for this now. Uh, this is number two. I think this was a 50-50 split. Like, this is a variant cover, but it's equal. And it's by J.H. Williams III uh, doing his version of Blink. I don't think it's worth anything more than the original cover. All right, we're almost done, guys. Hang in there. Hang in there. And this is the last stack from the flea market in Hillsville, Virginia, where uh, I traded those books, 200 books and stuff. I am going to try to get this DC-52. I flipped through uh, one issue of this. I thought this was fantastic. I'm a fan of Dial H for Hero. I was a fan of uh, Hero by Will Pfeiffer that came out a few years ago. And now they got a, uh, they had uh, some novelists come in, a China Myville. But he came in and he did his version of Dial H for um, Hero. Well, just Dial H. So anyway, uh, number five, number six, awesome Brian Boland covers. This thing had a lot more substance than, and a little bit more sophistication with the one or two issues I flipped through. Uh, I have some more in the shelves, number eight. Um, that, you know, track, you know, this is one of those books that kind of, I wish they put it under a vertigo line, number nine. Might be some reviews one day. Number ten. Okay. Uh, teen, uh, April of 1994. This is volume two of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at Mirage Studios, I think. So I ended up getting number four. Oh, love those. Mm, yep. Got me a Millennium Edition of Showcase number four, the first appearance of The Flash. I'll grab these all day long. Just awesome. Uh, got some Cerebus here. You know, you get the idea. These are some earlier, uh, early issues. Uh, they range from 48 to 72. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go through all these. But, yeah, I'm getting a pretty good collection of uh, Cerebus up. I uh, got my X-Men, Secret Wars 2. X-Men 202, Secret Wars 2. So, as you can see, you see why I wanted to make this video. i got to get these organized. Uh, 196. What's strange is I had all these X-Men uh, back in, you know, for a while, and... They've been ripped off of me. I've, I've told the video where, like, in 2008, I came home, and uh, over the course of a month, I started noticing my boxes weren't that packed. And I know it was somebody that knew me, but they got in to where I was living, and they kind of cherry-picked through my collection. And that's why I didn't notice there was a lot of stuff gone. Uh, Wizard Half Issue, Mars Attacks, One Step Closer to Having All Those. Uh, and then I found these. I grabbed them. Uh, New Mutants, number 28. Number 29, and we all know about the New Mutants movie, 26 and 27, and that is bound to fill in some gaps before they go crazy. Barry Winsler Smith issue of Iron Man, uh, 232, uh, I think he co-plotted this and drew the interiors. I mean, this is from 1980, oh my God, can't remember. We'll just leave it at that. But it's issue 232. I think this might be in the middle of the Armor Wars. But it's definitely the 80s because he's got the Silver Centurion um, uh, Iron Man armor on. So, yeah. Great stuff. Love that stuff. Found me another copy of Justice League. This is probably like my fifth copy of this or something like that. Uh, found some Caliber X, number one and two. This is an upgrade. This is part of the Age of Apocalypse. X, X Caliber, just the X. No E in, e in front of it. Is kind of hard to get because it's Warren Ellis. One and two. I still need three and four, and I'll have all the Age of Apocalypse. Found uh, this. Turns out there was two copies in this. I thought it was just a borderless copy, but uh, Weapon X, the last chapter, number 84, by Barry Winsler Smith through Marvel Comics Presents. It's the story of how the adamantium got laid, uh, uh, how the adamantium was laced onto Wolverine's uh, skeleton. Zeit Jice by Flash Gordon from uh, Dynamite Studios. I almost have all of these. Alex Ross got in here. It's just it's kind of like a mix of uh, 
they took everything that was great about the Flash Gordon mythos and kind of compressed it together from the 30s serials to the 1980s movie, you know, stuff like that. Then I got a ooh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of what ifs, uh, what ifs number 10. And what was funny is that the the ones he had will just weave right into my collection, okay? But this is what if the Punisher's family had never been killed. This is what if number 10 from you know this, this series started in the 90s, 1990 I believe. What if Fantastic Four had all the same powers, number 11? And I'll be honest with you, you know, the reason there were holes in my collection is that they're not all winners, folks. Not all winners at all. What if the Fantastic Four battled Doctor Doom before they got their powers? Number 18. What if the Silver Surfer had not escaped Earth, number 22? And I'm kind of, I'll be interested to read this because I have a Marvel fanfare that was done by Steve Englehart and John Bushima, I believe. Uh... In 1985, 86, Silver Surfer got his first ongoing series, and Steve Englehart and Marshall Rogers got him off of Earth after being trapped by Galactus. And Marvel Fanfare reprinted the uh, printed the uh, original number one, where Silver Surfer's ongoing series would take place on Earth, and he brought in Mantis and everything like that. So it'll be interesting to see what they did with the what if and see what the difference is. What if Fantastic Four had lost the Trial of Galactus, number 15? Oh, I can't wait to read this one. Great John Romita Jr. Uh, cover on there, I guess. You know, but what if Craven the Hunter had killed Spider-Man? Um, you know, the Craven Hunt is one of my favorite Spider-Man stories. It really is. It was just a, it was just a feat, man. It came out like, uh, and um, Spider-Man had so many titles. It was coming out weekly, I think. And Mike Zek did all the art, and J.M. Demantes wrote all the scripts, and they got all the books out real quick. And it, it had an atmosphere. It had its own little vibe it was something special and then what if war machine had not destroyed the living laser number 63 all right guys that is the heller hustle sorry it took so long that was the heller hustle for april 2015 thanks for hanging in there man guys hang out uh hope you uh you know summer is finally officially here it's been hot it's been rainy it's been muggy it's been sunshine it's been burning i wish i could make all that rhyme so uh you guys have a good one later